When I got this van, it had already had new brake discs at the back, new bearings, and they'd put new uh, pads in it. So I was pretty pleased about that. The thing I've noticed though is that the handbrake's a bit sticky. So I've had a look at the caliper, and as usual, it looks like it's been living at the bottom of the sea for about 20 years. And I thought, well, I could try and give this a clean up, or I can have a look at how much just a new caliper is and replace the calipers on both sides. So they're actually quite cheap probably cheaper to replace it in time yeah for the cost than it is to actually take it apart and clean it I could do that but uh, you know it takes me a couple of hours by the time you've unscrewed the, uh, the piston and such like you still got to buy all the seals and everything so this video is basically just changing the caliper and it's one of those jobs that could be very easy or one bolt away from a couple of weeks. See how it goes. The rear axle is quite low to the ground so it's quite easy to get a pretty standard jack under it and then putting some blocks underneath the uh, suspension mounting means that if it came off the jack or the jack goes down it's not going to land on the floor. This is the offending caliper and basically I need to undo the two slide bolts so that the bit with the pistoning slide back and forward you take these off pull it out so you can take the pads off then there's another two bolts that actually mount the bracket onto the uh, onto the hub. Take them off. Now the one that worries me the most is actually this. It's crusty, it's rusty. If that breaks I need to get another soft hose. Hopefully I'll be able to get it off without breaking it but we'll see. I'm intending to put a bit of heat into this before I start attacking it. I've put some penetrating oil on it over the last week or so so hopefully that might have soaked in we'll see how we go on obviously I need to take the handbrake off open the bonnet so that I can get hold of the reservoir when I need to top up the fluid a good bit of advice before you start dismantling anything is to get the thing you're going to replace it with and just check that they've sent you the right one that it looks like it'll fit in the same way because when they're made down to a price, the people who are packing these and sending them off don't always get everything packed correctly. This one looks good to me. I know that these have been replaced, so I'm pretty confident that these have been taken off in the recent past, so the likelihood is they'll still come off. Whereas this probably hasn't been touched since it was made. So what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm just going to see if I can get this undone. Um, first of all, I'm going to have a wire brush in, some more uh, penetrating oil, a little bit of heat on here. Now it's a 14mm and I've only got open-ended spanners that will go on this. I'd really like to have one that had a hex that go on it, but we'll see how it goes. Frequently you end up cutting these and buying new ones, but maybe I'll be able to reuse it. Bit of a wire brush first. Let's hope some mud got on there really early on and protected it. Tad more penetrating oil. And before I even touch it, I am going to try a bit of heat. Just to give it its very best chance first time round. Now spraying a little bit more penetrant on this bit, cool it down. Nice tight fit. Well, the gods of mechanicking have been kind to me today. That's come up quite 
come loose quite nicely. Now what I'll have to do is, instead of letting it all drip out, I'll put a clamp on here, and a little clamp, so that there's no more fluid coming through. Then I'll take this off, and I'll twist this round, the caliper itself, to undo it, because I can't undo that, it's not going to have any any chance of turning. So let's crack on with that. That was a 14, these I know are 13s. Like I said, I knew they'd been off before. Be nice to have one of those ratchet right angled malarkeys. But hey. Now, the handbrake cable is still on it here. So, what you want to do is when you get this off, take the handbrake cable off. Which may or may not be that easy. Like anything needs to go the way you don't want it to go. There must be some trick to this. I'm losing patience now. Ah, success. Eey, that wasn't the easiest thing in the world to get off, but hey, it did in the end. There we go. Right, so far, actually, so good. have to watch when it's going to come undone that you're not going to punch something. That's how the channel got its name, Spannerash. <laughs> the old one off. Now then I just want to make sure that uh, all the pads and everything will be nice and clean to fit into the new one. So I'll do that before I continue. So there's a brake in proceedings. I need new anti-rattle clips and they're broken. I was hoping they might have been replaced when it had new pads but they haven't been and they've broken when I've tried to clean them. So that's going to put at least a day's halt on this job. I have to tidy my tools away now and leave it for a next day. Well, here we are a day later. The link I'll put in the description for these clips. Good as the word, had them here the next day. Thank you. 
Now let's get this bracket back on. Put the pads in. them on. Now the next thing is the caliper once it's fitted on goes over the top of the pads. Thing you need to watch out for, not so much with a new caliper, but on the back of the pad there is a little uh, metal locating spigot that actually goes into one of these slots on the piston. If you've had to wind the piston back make sure that it's actually going to go into there and not to the side because otherwise you'll have real issues with your back brakes. So it's going to go on that way. All I need to do now is change the hose over. making sure that little dibber lines up okay and that should go back on like that Now I just need to remove this clip and I'll bleed it through in a little while. That's stopped all of the fluid running out. Now I need to get the handbrake cable back on. So, me too. As usual, I'll put the camera in the place I want the actual tool to be. myself. There we go. Said it had gone easier than it came off. Now the final thing is the actual sensor for the brake pads. Yeah. Now like a lot of transits mine's disconnected so I'm not going to overly worry about it but I will position it somewhere so it looks legit. So now we just need to bleed it through. So bleed nipple off. It's a 10 mil and really nice spanners for these. I'll put them in the description as well. Okay, so it's loose. 
let me just leave that on there put a nice little tube on it and then luckily I've got luckily I've got Mrs Spanarash who is now going to do the leg work for me right Chuck press it gently down a couple of times Just gently. Sit down and hold it down. I'm holding it down now. Now up and down a couple of times. Up. Down. It's up. Down. Hold it. can't see any air coming through there so I'm happy tighten the bleed nipple up don't kill it let it off and all the way back up and on and pushing down as far as I can and off and on oh, that's looking a lot better now pull the handbrake on And break off. And break off. I've got everything working like I'd want it to now. Now what I will do is I'll make sure I torque these, those, and obviously the wheel nuts to the right torque setting. I'll put that into the description. Then I'll shove the wheel back on and give it a road test. I will have a look just to make sure we haven't got a drip anywhere or you know something's a bit looser make sure that it's working okay test the handbrake uh, but basically that is the job and I'm very pleased with uh, how that's gone I need to do the one on the other side now and I'll let you off with that if you found this useful why not give us a like and if you like the kind of projects we do why not subscribe doesn't matter whether you subscribe or not though we always appreciate you watching